Hello everyone, this is Nancy L.T. Hamilton. Uh, this video is the second part of the um, wire working basics video that I did. And in that video, I said we were going to make bracelets, but after much experimentation, uh, the video turned out to be over an hour long. So I have revised what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how to make a pendant that has less solder joins. Um, I've made several bracelets. This is one example here. There's tons of solder joins. There's forming, there's jump rings, there's clasps, and all kinds of other, oh, and the soldering the little balls on. And um, the other one that I made is even more complex than this, and I just kind of got carried away. So we're gonna stick with the pendant I just wanted to show you some of the things that I've been playing with um, and what you can do with the wire shapes that you make. Here are some right here. This is a chain. Uh, this is a cuff bracelet. This is done with 18 gauge and I do not recommend a cuff with 18. It's pretty and delicate, but it's very, very weak. So if you're going to do a cuff, I would do 12 gauge, ideally 14 if you must. And the metal choice will have a huge diff, make a huge difference on the strength and lack of flexibility. Um, brass, bronze, and certainly silver are, and, and uh, nickel and steel even are going to give you a much stiffer material to work with than the copper. So... I would say ixne on the copper nay a uh, and especially 18 gauge for a cuff the link bracelets this is an 18 gauge you could get away with this um, I would definitely remember that it may not last forever because it's so fragile uh, this is 16 16 gauge this one and the last one I did was 14 which I unfortunately don't have with me because I lost it um, here's another pendant that you can make and this one I did because I wanted to show that you could wire wrap it although I am a terrible wire wrapper I'm I'm new at it so I'm going to give myself a break <laughs> because learning doesn't always mean pretty <laughs> so maybe if I make 20 of them I'll be a lot better anyway that's what today's video is going to be about and I hope these little doodads here give you some ideas okay so this is what you're going to need for this project 18 gauge round copper wire you can do it in silver but I recommend doing it at least once in copper unless you're a real daredevil we're going to need four question mark spirals that's the question mark uh, two S shaped which is that one six centimeter long uh, S spirals and three 16 gauge 3.5 millimeter jump rings. Okay, first thing obviously is we need to cut off a length of copper wire. I think I have about two feet here. And I'm gonna mark it at eight centimeters. And then I'm gonna trim off with the flush side facing up if I can see this a piece I want to trim off this wedge shape here to make my second one and then I like to use my steel block because my table's a little uneven I'm just gonna lay the plier on top of the other one and trim so that I have two that are the same then I want to straighten this wire like so okay this is important you want to mark your pliers 
at 1.5 centimeters. So find one leg, so it's about there. And you want to draw a line across both. Go ahead and do it on the other side. I'm pretty sure this is already, yeah, this mark here for me. Make it darker. They wear off quickly. Let it dry. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create a perfect circle with a swirl. Um, remember that from the last video? Grab it so that there's nothing sticking out as close as you can get to the center of the pliers. That wasn't it. I'm going, I'm going to pull out here so you can see a little bit of what's going on with my wrist. There's my wrinkly wrist. Okay, start with a turn. Slide the pliers around back to the beginning. Try to keep this thing in the middle of your mark and the plier flat up against the loop. This finger is pulling, these fingers are pulling down. Second turn, release, turn back. Third turn, I'm going to slide this finger in here and twist my wrist as far as it'll go. So what I have is that. Flip it over, I'm going to do the curl on the opposite side. Same thing, line up. Turn one, turn two, turn three with the finger in there and as far as you can go. So you end up with that. So go ahead and do the other one. Okay, so now what we want to do is check to make sure that we're on the same page, that we have equal shapes here, and we don't. Let's see. Okay, I'll line you up. Oh, these are so fuzzy. We have a little more curve on this one than on this, so I'm going to try to fix that. Uh, squeeze it with my flat nose, kind of push down with my finger. Well, it's probably bigger than the other curve. Oh, that looks pretty good. And this looks like it needs to come in tighter. So let's see if I can do that with these. Let's just kind of pull it up and see where we are now. still needs to come up. I can switch to this. There's a lot of adjusting in this. I'm going to push this up against the base of the circle and can even go in like this to give it a little squinch. It's amazing to me that things can be so different. Done exactly the same way. Okay, I think I got it. All right. <laughs> Now this part here, honestly, is a ton easier if it's annealed. So I'm going to anneal this metal and do the spiral after I anneal. So we're gonna make, one side is gonna have, flatten that, one side is gonna have a bigger swirl, a bigger, yeah, spiral than the other. So I'm just line this up a little bit better. Put this in here with this at about 90 degree. Get my finger in there, turn. If the gap's too much, you can give it a little squeeze. Remember, this is annealed, so it's very soft. Two. Give it another squish. And three. And maybe one more squish. And I'm really being gentle. <laughs> and if you need to do any adjusting, now is the time. Okay, and this one is going to have two turns. One. Two. That one went much better. Okay. And then let's do our um, six millimeter little curl guys. So once you get your pieces made, 
I highly recommend heat cleaning them, which means warming the metal up enough that you bring off grease. You don't have to go to a full annealing temperature, but we want these things clean. Um, I would flatten everything before. Make sure your jump rings are tightly fitted with no gaps, unlike this one, which is wide open. So do all your prep work before you heat clean because you don't want to touch these a lot. Um, the next step is putting it together to solder. So here we are in solder land. Um, I recommend soldering these in small chunks. If you're feeling real spunky and brave, you can do your jump rings. At the same time, they are really hard to visually line up. I use a paintbrush to move them. Just not feeling these. Looking slightly off and I don't know why. One of the things you can do is take a ruler and slide it up against this to get this lined up. And you can use the ruler for the top too. And just move the bottom. See how fussy this can get? And every time you move one, the, everything else moves, and then everything is not touching. The goal here is for everything to be in line and touching. I'm also trying, which I can't see very well because I don't have my magnifiers on, to put the seam of the jump ring up against the piece. Okay, I'm sort of happy. <laughs> so I've flexed my seams. I've cut a bunch of little Italians from uh, hard solder. I think I need a little more flux over here. Never hurts to put more. What I'm doing now is I'm drying the flux so that my my Italians don't go leaping off on me when I start soldering. Okay, the goal is to put the solder either in the seam like that I don't know if you can see that let's see it's as far as I can zoom um, or lay it across it needs to be touching both pieces and your solder needs to have flux on it also I have often dumped my Italians into my flux bowl. Uh, there. And then one more. And I get my little brush damp like every third, second or third time to um, pick up the Italians so that they for sure have a coating. Nice colors, huh? Okay, now I'm going to turn this butane, wait, let me show you, my butane Ivatani torch, do a general heat here, and then I'm going to just focus in on a seam with the blue tip on that seam. I want both sides, there we go, beautiful, both sides heat up exactly at the same time, exactly at the same temperature. Perfect. One more. Let's see if we can have it. Uh, no, there's always one. This one, the, see there's a gap here that must have occurred when I wasn't looking. So this will have to be resoldered after I pickle it. It's too dirty. The metal is too dirty now to solder. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> so if you have a magnesia block, magnesia, not um, um, you might want to use it. You can hold things in place with pins. So you have, if you push, this whole thing doesn't move. Um, so anyway, what we want to do now is solder on these two elements here, and of course flux our seams, and I got to put that jump ring back on up here. 
So we have one, two, three. Normally you would have three seams to solder. Since one of us, one of us didn't get our um, jump ring soldered, so I have four. I wanted to mention when you're brass brushing this after it comes out of the pickle, be very careful. It moves really easily. It's annealed and it's soft as butter. So this is the next soldering adventure part. I'm going to add that jump ring on the end and the upside down here. You can see two. Actually, that one was right. The question mark uh, swirls fit in there against the wall so okay I'm gonna do this you've already seen me solder don't need to hear me scream and curse so I'll see you when this is soldered and show you the next steps check all your solder seams very carefully and flip the piece over if you do not see solder on the back connecting the two joints you have to do it again. Any loose connections here and you will have a serious mess on your hands. So I'm refluxing some of these seams that are not well soldered and then I'm um, going to add a little extra solder on the back side. I turn the piece over. Don't get discouraged. This is very difficult soldering. You're soldering round edges together and they don't fit nice and flush like a flat edge will. So it is challenging and you're working with really bendy, bendy metal. So it's easy to knock these things out of shape. It's okay. I keep thinking of things to tell you, it's, it's driving me nuts. Um, if your solder, when you're putting it on the warm metal, gets stuck in a weird place and you can't get it off, just re-wet your brush and come in and it'll loosen loosen it up and it'll help you move it. If that doesn't work, there's a good old solder pick or you can come in with your tweezers and re-line it. Okay. Miracle upon miracles, it's soldered together. Now if anything is a little out of shape, you can pull them now. Now's the time to adjust. Just be careful you don't overdo it. Um, this is so, 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 so soft that we're going to do something to harden, work harden this metal up so it's not so uh, flexible. Also, you're probably saying to yourself, Nancy, this is disgusting. It looks terrible. There's solder all over it because there probably will be. It's okay. Don't panic. <laughs> I have a couple of tricks up my sleeve that I will show you. But we're getting there. Yahoo! So one of the things I want to do is take my shiny faced hammer and my shiny faced block and start hammering some of these shapes. I can hammer the outer edge of this swirl up here, wherever you feel like it, honestly. And that, that's going to help tighten things up. Also, um, I like to take my bracelet mandrel and a mallet maybe up here and give this a little curve so it has where are you so it has some dimension to it it's up to you what you want to do as far as the curve is concerned but um, this is considerably helped tighten everything up here so that we're not the first time somebody wears it it turns into a glob okay next on to the finishing and a couple of other little details that I can't remember right now I'm putting on a coarse sanding disc you could also use 320 sandpaper on this um, but I want to take down these, some of these lumps on the solder. Try to make it look a little, well that one's really bad. A little less funky looking. 
We are going to do one more step to hide this solder. Don't forget your back. People do flip pendants over. It's a sign of quality craftsmanship if your pieces are finished on the back side. It should be a 360 degree piece of perfection. Or as close as we can get to it. Or as close as your skill set allows you to get to it. Just do the best you can, basically. So after this uh, 320, I'm probably going to go to, I mean, not 320, to my course. I'm going to go to my medium and then my fine sanding disc. And uh, then we're going to do some more terrible things to metal. So once you're done, if you've mangled the shape, um, go back and whack it on your bracelet mandrel. If you don't have a bracelet mandrel, use a soup can or something along those lines, shape-wise, just large and curved. And I also wanted to talk about some other options if you really want to get into um, some of the crevices. This piece, it doesn't really matter because we're going to be plating. Um, but if this was silver, you might want to get into some of these really mangled areas. There are things called knife edge silicone polishing wheels or um, knife edge pumice. There's also bristle brushes. I think 3M makes these. And oh, there's another one which I have somehow lost. It's a, uh, yeah, I'm going to go look for it. Found it, finally. Polishing pins. You can use this with or without the mandrel that comes with it. If you have a, a chuck key hand piece, you'll need, you can use this without the mandrel. With a quick release hand piece, I have to use the mandrel because I can't really adjust down on the pin. Oh, guess where that went? So if this gets out of sharp pointy edge you just drag it down nice big mill file and you can drag it down the other side you can also do this if it becomes really impregnated with goop from your metal okay enough finishing for now and let's see what are we gonna do i think i'm going to to the next part <laughs> whatever that is I have a strand of these sweet little teardrop pearls um, this was so the hole was so big small that I just drilled it out using a regular high-speed drill bit that was the gauge that I wanted it to be and I put it in here with water in it and drilled in side this uh, lid to keep the dust down and you should, probably should be wearing a mask even if you're doing it in water so I'm gonna hang this here I keep thinking up here too but I think I'm gonna leave that negative space and just put the pearl at the end so I'm gonna put a little jump ring here and then I'm gonna wire this onto that jump ring all right I'm gonna grab about I don't know six inches of the 22 gauge round copper have I lost that pearl I will just scream if I did it looks like I did oh there it is yay okay so I'm gonna stick this wire in there so I'm gonna fold this up like so cross it that grab a plier somehow. This is actually easier with thinner wire. And then I'm just gonna give it a twist to hold everything in place like that. And I'm gonna take my round nose up towards the end and make a loop. And then I'm gonna run the wire into this jump ring and hook it so that the loop is uh, up at the top and I'm going to get 
give it a couple of twists around the stem. That. And then I'm going to cleanly and neatly trim these wires as close as I can. I might have to get my other wire cutters that are more finely uh, nose jawed so that I can actually get in there and get those spots out of there. But for now, there's the pendant. You can make this tighter. And using thinner wire will make make it easier to make this a little shorter. You could also use a slightly smaller jump ring than this to make it closer up if you so desired. So um, I've got a couple more steps. Actually, while I'm here, I might as well throw these jump rings in too. <clears throat> these are just for attaching to a chain. And they'll go up at the top like that and then you can just hook your chain onto that okay if you have any rough edges after a final trimming you can always come in with your sandpaper and or files and clean it up okay I think you're gonna be pretty excited about this trick um, and maybe send me millions of dollars for telling you about <laughs> So what I've done is taken pickle out of my pickle pot over here, sodium bisulfate, and I have a piece here of steel binding wire. Don't use, it won't work with, uh, what am I trying to say? Stainless steel. Ventilation you can hear in the background, and you want pickle that has copper in it. You can tell it has copper in it because it's blue. This is gonna start bubbling. You're going to drop your piece in here and you want it near the steel. You want, you want an electrical contact, well it makes a little slight electrical current from what I have read. And what it does is somehow the, the different metals in here set up this electrical current and the, the copper ions glom on to the um, the copper your piece and essentially plates the whole piece with copper you will see like smoke coming off of this and that's um, probably my guess hydrogen gas probably other exciting things so that's why you want to have it near your ventilation when you take this out what you want to do is you want to take that steel wire and your piece and put it in your baking soda and then rinse it really well um, most likely you're going to throw this pickle out after neutralizing it. Or you can store it for future episodes of having to plate something because of solder everywhere. <laughs> so anyway, it's the coolest trick. You don't, it's a very thin layer, so you don't want to be scrubbing on this, you know. It, it'll expose um, the silver in your seam and obviously you can only do this with copper alas and a lack okay that's probably enough so I'll show you when I'm done getting it out so here we have our copper piece with absolutely no visible solder but anyway um, next step is liver of sulfur and uh, then we can maybe pretend we're attaching a chain and <laughs> call it done all right we're getting to the end so here is a boiling, it was boiling hot water with a pea-sized chunk of liver of sulfur. I'm going to drop, throw the pendant in, <laughs> and give it a second or two. All right, so that's dark enough. It's near to black. You want to have a container of water nearby to rinse it in to stop the action. And you, sh you can leave it this dark. Um, I'm also going to show you a method to bring up the highlights on it to after. I'm going to go wash this with soap and water and a toothbrush now. So now I've got some quadruple aught, four aught, which is four zeros, steel wool, wool. And I'm just going to 
lightly hit some of these areas here. And this will need to be washed one more time. So there we have our pendant made from wire. Good job. I'm going to take a nice picture of it. Maybe find a chain to stick on it. This is Nancy L.T. Hamilton saying ciao.